What's up, y'all? I'm Nike Global Trainer Joe Holder, and I'm also a hyper performance consultant, and I'm gonna take you through a simple little series that you could do to warm up before your runs. We're gonna need the Hypervolt Go 2 here today, and as always, just kind of power it on. Uh, we can use the flathead for this and kind of stick to one speed or two. And we're gonna hit some of the just basic areas that are necessary for you to feel better before you run. I want you to start sitting though. A lot of people use it standing. I'm more of the believer as we start on our calf and we'll kind of go up and down that we want the muscles to be a little bit more relaxed. And as a runner myself, I know sometimes warm-ups are annoying. I want you to be able to sit on the couch as you do this. So first we'll just start with the calf and we'll start on our right side first and we'll kind of move up and down. Uh, the calf is, uh, is key, as you know, it helps uh, kind of transfer force during our runs and a lot of people overlook it. Um, so we just kind of want to get some increased blood flow in there. It also acts as an additional kind of heart and little pump of the body. And we're just gonna move up and down. So a lot of times with these warm ups for our runs, we just wanna bring awareness to our body. That's really it. it. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. Sometimes they're overlooked spots. The key areas we're gonna hit is kind of our legs. We kind of hit our hips and calves a little bit in addition to our quad. Uh, and then we'll hit our spine. A lot of people overlook the spine. Let's switch sides. And it can actually help integrate the whole body. So especially if you have a tight mid back, it often could cause issues with our runs. So we wanna focus on that. But I'm gonna show you a different area that we'll hit once we get to there. But we'll just move up and down and easy on that calf, okay? So we kinda hit it from the side, and we'll hit it from the back, and keep it simple. You can even cross friction, which I like to do a little bit. So you find a spot, just kinda move left to right. So it's nothing too wild, probably just get to spend 30 seconds to a minute on each calf. And just take the time, there's no rush here, no rush. We're about to go running and we have all the time out there. And then we'll kind of move up to this upper leg. As you'll see, we just kind of move up and down. A lot of people remember have tight IT bands, especially if you run a lot. But one of the key really is, is to focus on the quad, not the IT band itself, okay? And an easy way to do that is right on that outer quad, we'll move left to right. All right, so we're on that leg and we'll, let's call it a little travel. It's our little Sahara desert, you know what I mean? Except, you know, we're not parched. We're getting some blood and some fluid to that muscle. So just move left to right. So we should have went up and down twice already. And just do that for me a couple more times, okay? And again, try to keep that leg relaxed, all right? If you find a spot that whatever is a little knotty, don't tense up, okay? Just stay chill. And this is an easy time also to focus on our breathing, all right? So we hit that outer quad, and now we'll kind of gravitate towards the inner thigh. Uh, a lot of people like to just simply focus on, you know, the glutes, but you gotta balance it out and understand that the inner thigh is also super important for stabilization of the body, and just kind of work through there. So some of those overlooked areas are just hit, okay? And especially if you get some tightness around the knee, uh, this will likely help that, especially when we add in some dynamic work. So we're gonna keep moving. Let's go to the other leg. And again, we're just moving up and down. So just travel that, traverse, traverse, traverse. Moving up, down, easy. And again, notice my leg is relaxed. It's not tightened up. You see that when I, you see, see that? It's a good quad, it's a good flex right there. So we're just gonna keep moving up and down. Remember, outer thigh, connects to the IT band, but we don't always want to hit the IT band itself. We're just moving left to right. Getting blood flow, getting awareness. Give me a couple more trips. Could have your playlist go right now. You could be watching, you know, I don't know, Sports Center or something. You could just be chilling while you do this. Simple and easy. Last trip. And then we start to gravitate towards that inner leg. And it's cozy. And again, the simple thing here is, you know we're gonna use our legs when we run. Let's just get awareness to it. Let's free up some of that tension. And especially, you know, possibly a little bit of that nerve tension. We're just flossing the tissues. There we go. All right, and then for this next one, so we hit the quad, all right? We hit the calf. Keep moving, got a couple more areas. 
Now what I want you to do, you kind of just kind of got to sit and rotate the body. You can do this, you can be on the ground. Uh, you could also still be on the couch and we're just going to kind of hit that outer glute. Especially if you're a runner, this really often gets tightened up, okay? This is an area where a few different muscles attach and we're just kind of moving through. So you'll know when you hit it, kind of get right, not on the side bone, but a little bit towards the back and towards that upper glute. And we'll spend about 15 seconds here and just kind of move nice and easy through. 10 more seconds. If you want, you can kind of move that leg a little bit just to kind of get some more awareness in there. We got five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Let's hit the other side. Nice and easy. Just come on an angle. Keep that leg relaxed. Spend about 30 seconds here. It's one of my favorite moves. I've done over maybe six or seven marathons now. I played football. These things get gunked up. So as you just spend a little bit of time before our runs, get some awareness to our body, and then just mix some dynamic motions with a little bit of a hypervolt. We good, we Gucci, we kosher. So give me about 10 more seconds here. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. And then what we're gonna do, we're just gonna hit, keep that leg nice and relaxed. And then we're just gonna kind of get the hamstring, okay? There's a key tendon that kind of runs up here, especially if you might sometimes suffer from a little bit of uh, sciatica or anything like that. We just, the hamstrings are important for our runs. They help kind of stabilize the body, also decelerate, especially when we're moving a little bit fast as we try to transfer through. So don't overlook those back lines. What I like to do, especially because I get a little nerve tension in there, I like to, again, cross friction. It's move left and right as I move up and down. So give me about 10 more seconds here. Then we just got one more move. Then I'm gonna take you through a few simple dynamic movements and you're ready to go out the door. The warm up is part of the workout. You can't think of it as a separate thing. Ooh, this feels good. I'm getting lost in this side. All right, we're gonna go to the other one, ready? All right, take it, remember, just flip it up, nice and easy, move left to right. I want you to kind of, you'll be able to memorize this to an extent. So just don't have the hyperbole laying around, use it. I got a tough run workout in yesterday, so I'm a little sore. So I really need this, actually. All right, there we go. Keep moving. Woo! Up and down, left to right. I'm telling you, you gotta, you know, you gotta treat the ham hocks well, otherwise. All right, there we go. Five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. Okay, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna kinda focus on the upper body a little bit. This is a quick, easy one. It'll help free up your spine. A lot of people, especially women, you might get tight in this chest area here. So a lot of times when that happens, what happens, your shoulders end up being curved in here. You're not gonna have mobility through your T-spine. Your lower back gets a little bit too unstable and it's probably gonna end up hurting, especially if you're a runner. So what we're gonna do is, nice and easy, we're just gonna unlock the chest. And this will help unlock our spine. So we're gonna hit the upper chest, and we're just gonna move left to right here. And as you're doing this, you kinda move that neck a little bit if you want. Just kinda get lost in this for a second, All right? You got about 10 seconds here, just hitting that upper pec. Don't let the shoulder ride up, keep it relaxed, okay? Nice and easy. For five, there we go. Four, three, two, one. I know you're like, Joe, what, why are we doing this? I'm, I'm running. I don't need to worry about this. Yes, you do. Your body's a whole integrative unit. And the spine connects to the hips. Hips move on down. That's locomotion. So we want to make sure that we hit a few different key areas. So give me about 10 more seconds here. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good. We're going to turn this off and now we're going to take you through a few dynamic movements, okay? We can do this first one still sitting and since we just hit the chest, we're going to hit the spot. So what we'll do is just nice and easy. You can also do a standing if you want, if you're ready to kind of get up and get moving. What you're going to do just nice and easy is we're going to have our left uh, leg forward and we're just going to reach forward with our right hand and we're just going to pull back. So 
So we're moving through the upper back. Again, that T-spine, after we open up the chest, you'll probably notice that you have a little bit of a better range of motion, okay, in that back. The lower half is staying stable, pelvic stabilization, lumbar stabilization, and we're just opening through that upper back. So we got to five, now let's get to six. And if you just sit all day, this is a good one to do. A lot of us are sedentary, it's fine. I'm trying to grease the grooves for you. Keeping it simple, keeping it moving, let's go to that other side, okay? And what happens, remember when you run, you slightly reach across through that through the torso. You're not just uh, upright like this. So we're getting used to that motion, exaggerating a little bit during our warm up. That's why it's a dynamic warm up, and we pull back. I'm just explaining these to you now, so you'll know how, to, when, and how to do it. And then on your own, again, you could also always use this as a reference, but commit it to memory. This is a simple, great, easy warm up routine. And a lot of my clients and both myself feel better when we do it. So that's four reps. Let's get to six, five. Here we go, and six, good. And now we're gonna be here, just nice and easy. We're still sitting, we warmed up those calves. Now just give me a little calf pops, all right? We're gonna do this for 10 seconds. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good, and now we got, we got one more sitting move. I'll give us sitting hamstring floss. I know a lot of runners don't like to get on the ground when we do our warm up, which is fine. So that's when we give you the option for sitting. We usually do this on our back. It's easy to do it sitting. You can also do this if you're in an office chair all day and this could help, you know, uh, loosen you up. So we just hug the knee to the chest. We rotate the ankle out. Let's start with that right leg. We straighten it, rotate that ankle in and bend. That's the hamstring floss, okay? Rotate ankle out, rotate ankle in and bend. Well, small movements through the ankle also help wake up our nerves a little bit. So it's something called a little bit of a nerve glide. Uh, my brother's a doctor in physical therapy. He kind of took this from him after I had to do some rehab work, getting ready for Chicago Marathon. So it works. We got two more. Rotate out, straighten, rotate in, bend, rotate out, straighten, rotate in, bend. Good, let's go to the other side, okay? All right, hug to chest, rotate ankle out, straighten, rotate in, bend, rotate out, straighten, rotate in, bend, that's two, rotate out, straighten, rotate in, bend, we breathe in, we groove in, out, in, bend, three more, out, in, bend. So let's get that last floss, rotate out, straighten, rotate in, bend, and nice and easy, we're gonna stand up, should be feeling a little better. We're gonna kind of lose, shake it out a little bit, and then we're gonna kind of hit those hips, then we'll hit the road, or grass, or track, or wherever you're going. So what we're gonna do now is just nice and easy. We're gonna kind of open up these hips, especially after we hit the quads. We're just gonna take a nice step back, and I just kind of call this the runner's reach. Get a nice staggered step, and I want you to grow up nice and tall as your lower half kind of stays down, okay? So I right, get tall, string pulling me up, my back uh, foot stays grounded. I just nice, easy reach. Bend to the right, that front leg. Come back straight. Small bend. Easy scoop up. We're reaching tall, growing. Small bend. Here, bend the scoop, okay? We're here, growing. This is three. Rotate towards that front leg. We should feel this opening up, okay? Come back center. Just small bend. Nice reach. That's four. Let's get to five. Growing, growing, growing. Nice, easy bend. We're here, back down. One more, big up. There you go. Nice, easy bend. The back center, good. All right, let's switch sides. Stagger, one foot forward. Remember, press down, then grow up. Here we go. Can't stay in Neverland forever, you know? So we're here, we're nice and tall. Nice, easy bend. Come back center, slight bend in the knee, scoop up, tall, slight bend, come back center, scoop up, this is three, we're tall, nice easy bend, come back center, we're down, two more, tall, nice easy bend, come back center, we're here, and again. Now we're not arching that lower back all crazy, we're still staying tall, okay? We're here, nice easy bend, come back center. Good. Now we're just gonna shake it out. Here we go. And then, inner thigh activator right here. It's a simple one, takes 10 seconds, easy isometric. We take our fists, 
You place them in between the knees. All I want you to do is squeeze for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You got this body primed, then it's nice and easy to give me some pops. 10 seconds. Here we go. Five, four, just stimulate that nervous system a little bit. Three, two, one. Good. Nice, easy, simple warm up. What I really want you to focus on, just use that hypervolt go to, hit those key muscles and areas that are needed for the runs. We know we need to wake up our hips. We know we need to hit our calves, our legs, our glutes, that type of area, especially if we're a little tight there. And then we hit the chest to be able to open up the T-spine. And then I'm telling you, pick five moves, experiment with your body, that then target the areas that we then just had a little bit of soft tissue work on. I showed you some, commit it to memory, and then continue to explore. Then perhaps move left to right with some leg swings, get more T-spine work in standing. Your world is your oyster. But your body's your temple, you're feeling good. Thanks for warming up with me. I'm Joe, I'll see you soon.